In today's tutorial, we're going to time remap some footage to make it more interesting and dynamic. And if you'd like to follow along, you can download this footage for free in the description. And this video is made possible by our sponsor, me. Check out my course, Motion Design Upgrade, where I'll teach you much more about the graph editor, keyframes, and how to make people like you. Check out the link in the description. So before we time remap anything, it's important to understand what our limitations are. It's much easier to work with slow motion footage or footage with a high frame rate and try to stretch that out because you might not get good results if you try to take a low frame rate footage and try to time remap it to become slow motion. Now there are certain things we can do like add frame blending, which I will show you. But just know that a lot of this is dependent on the quality of the original footage. All right, disclaimer over, let's get to the tutorial. So now on my skateboard, let's see what my desired result is. It's basically, I want this footage to kind of start out fast, then do this sweet trick in slow motion and then land and then speed up again. So if I take off my time remap, Basically, this whole footage is just in slow motion going across. So to get that effect, what I'm gonna do, first I'm gonna apply my time remapping by right-clicking on the footage, go to time, enable time remapping. And you can see there's some other things like I could time reverse a layer, which will just reverse it. We could time stretch it, freeze the frame, etc. These are all pretty self-explanatory. We're not gonna go over them. We're just gonna enable time remapping. This is gonna make a frame a keyframe on the first and last frame of our footage. So now from here, what I want to do is I want to just kind of scrub through my footage and look for the key moments of what my time remap are going to be. So in this case, it's the first frame, then it's where my trick starts. So basically right here where I want the slow-mo to start, add a keyframe, go to the end of my slow-mo, which is about right here, add another keyframe, and then the last frame of my footage is gonna be another key moment right here. Cool. So then from here, what I wanna do is basically, I wanna squeeze in this, these two frames because I want this to be playback faster. So maybe I wanna just bring this in to be about one second here. So I'll grab these frames, bring them in. I can hold shift to make it snap to my playhead. And let's see what that looks like, play it back. Now that area is playing back much faster. This feels good still, I'll leave that in slow motion, and then I'll grab the last keyframe and bring that in to be about one second as well. And then I will just trim my work area by pressing N. Cool. So now if I play this all back together, we have a really good slow motion highlighted area that then has fast motion on the, the end points. Cool. And this time remap doesn't have to just be going forward. You know, I could say, what if I want this kind of trick to kind of DJ back and forth, like wicka wicka, like this. You know, I could make a keyframe maybe right here and, and then right here say, let's pull this time back a little bit, like back down to here and then let it play forward normally. So let's see what this will look like. And we'll get something like that. That's kind of a cool effect. You can do that if you want. So it'll be important to also know what this means in the graph editor. So if we highlight all of these keyframes and we click on the graph editor button, we get these lines that show up. And now there's two different graphs that we can look at here. Right now, I am in the speed graph. So what the speed graph shows us is we have a value that's happening per second. So this could be any kind of value that we're looking at. This could be position or rotation or scale animating per second. But since we're dealing with time remap, it's gonna be time per second. So right now it's seconds per second. A Little bit confusing, but let me explain. So where we have our footage you know, condensed into this tiny space here, we have six seconds happening per second. It's fast forwarded. Then it drops down here to one second per second, which is real time. Then when it drops down again here, it's dropping below zero to around negative two. So this is where it's going to rewind. It's going backwards in time. 
and then so on. So to me, this is kind of a very easy way to visualize this, but maybe this is not right for you. So we can head over to the value graph. So on the value graph, we have whatever value we're measuring displayed vertically, then time is horizontal. And this line between keyframes shows us the rate of change. If it's a straight line like this, it's a constant rate of change, AKA no easing or no acceleration. So you can see here where the footage is uh, sped up, the lines are going up like this. The footage is reversing, the lines are going down. When we reach the end of our footage over here, we reach the top of the graph. And you can also show both graphs together by clicking here and show reference graph. In my opinion, and this might be a hot take, I think that the value graph is harder to work with, uh, especially when time remapping. So for the rest of this tutorial, we are going to be working in the speed graph. So let's try this out on the next piece of footage. Okay. So the next piece of footage that we're gonna do is this kind of really dynamic ink spill. And if you're one of my true fans, you might recognize this from one of my outros. So how did we get here? Well, the original piece of footage, if I take off this time remap, is actually just kind of this really slow moving ink that travels across this footage over the course of about a minute. So. When I saw this, I thought this would be great because I can time remap this to do exactly what I want here. So how we're gonna approach this is once again, we're going to add time remapping on here, right click, enable time remapping. And we wanna go across and find the interesting beats of our video once again. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for, um, you know, I have my first frame is the start of the video. And I'll scrub through and find, okay, where does the ink cover a lot of the screen? Maybe like right here. So we're gonna have this really kind of quick um, spill in from here to here. And then we want, um, you know, a couple seconds where it's just kind of hanging out in the middle before this drop comes in. So I'll make another keyframe here. And then the end portion is gonna be once this drop kind of comes in and covers everything like here to here, All right? Maybe like that. Cool, and then everything else after that is gonna get deleted, that's fine. So I'll just bring my um, work area end in by clicking N on the keyboard, that'll be it. Or I'll just pull this in. So this from here to here right now is 11 seconds, but I want this to be really quick, maybe, maybe one second. So I'll grab all of these keyframes after here and drag them all in, snap it to my playhead by holding shift, cool. And let's see how this looks, play it back. Now that's pretty good. Now you'll notice that when I play this, it just kind of snaps to the new speed, but we'll fix that in a second. And I like how that kind of hangs out there. And then I want to this part to be a lot faster when it ends. So maybe this will also be about one or two seconds. I'll just pull this in and then end it. Let's see how that looks. If I play this back, that is great. So now what I want to do though, is I want to get in the graph editor here and fix this little bit so that this looks a little bit smoother. So I'm going to highlight these keyframes and click the graph editor button. So if I pull this up a little bit so we can see better. Here's what the graph editor is telling us. You know, we have the video playing at around 10 seconds per second. And then right here, it drops off sharply to play back at about real time. And we can see this happening there. So to, if I wanna smooth this portion out so that this plays smoothly from here to here, all I'm gonna do is just grab this keyframe here and just pull it down like this. And then just grab this Bezier handle and just smooth this part out. And if I just zoom in here and just make this a smooth little ramp, now this footage is gonna play back smoothly like that. Now I have this really smooth and dynamic ink spilling in like that with the footage. Very cool. Now let's see what happens at the end here. Now, am I gonna to wanna to do the same thing at the end here, but reversed? Well, if I pull this down and swing this up, what's gonna happen? 
Well, it's going to start out slow and then get really fast. So maybe that will be cool, but it doesn't look quite right. I think, you know, maybe that'll be cool for whatever your footage is, but I think I actually want the opposite if I'm playing off of the footage. So you want to play off of your footage. So I'm going to undo this. And I think when my drop comes in, I actually want this to kind of be the opposite. I think I want it to kind of speed ramp down, start out really fast, and then slow down like that. That looks a lot cooler to me. So I'm manipulating time to do what I want here. Kind of like uh, Leonardo DiCaprio or in that movie. I don't know if you've seen it. And then I'll just pull my work area down a little bit. And this will just be my whole sequence. Let's play this whole thing back and see if it's pretty cool. Spoiler alert, I already know that it is. And there we go. Nice. And now one last little tip before I leave you. If we go back to our scene here, let's say I stretched this out really far here and way beyond like 100% speed so that things are very slow in our video, right? And it's kind of getting this choppy, jittery playback here that's happening. So this doesn't look quite great. Um, if this is happening, you can add what's called a frame blending right here. And we have two kinds. We have frame mix and pixel motion. And so the difference between these frame mix is gonna take a little bit less time to render, but pixel motion generally is gonna give better results. But what this does is that this is basically going to try to um, blend between your frames and you know, try to uh, guess, I suppose, guess information in between your frames if you have stretched them beyond 100%. And so you can see here, it's also going to um, add right here. So that's the same as just adding the effect right here. You can see that this is making my playback look a lot better. So if I take this off and put my video at full quality too, without it on, let me even make this way more exaggerated so you can see. Without, have this very choppy playback and with it on it looks a lot smoother so this isn't a always a 100 percent going to work all the time but if you have a relatively simple footage like this this can help a lot so yeah i hope this video helped everybody let me know leave a comment if it did and as always thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one Goodbye.